What is going on, guys? I cannot believe it. Ed Woodward has stepped down. He has resigned as the Manchester United chairman. And this is insane. The past few days have been the, the craziest for, for us football fans, for Manchester United fans. And I honestly cannot believe that this is happening. Ed Woodward is gone. And this is the start. This is the start. Next up, it'll be the Glazers. So I'm going to read you the article that Ed Woodward has resigned. So this is on The Athletic. Um, Ed Woodward resigns as Manchester United chairman. Ed Woodward has resigned as chairman of Manchester United. Woodward's resignation comes after Manchester United were heavily criticised by their own supporters for agreeing to join a breakaway European Super League, which was absolutely disgusting to do to us fans. And I honestly have never felt so low in my life. I've, I was crying 10 minutes ago. I was crying. Um, and I probably will start again. I'm an emotional wreck. Um, why he resigned. So Woodward's decision to resign as Manchester United's chairman comes after, at, oh my God, a big word, <laughs> a tremendous 48 hour following announcement of the breakaway of the European Super League. Uh, legendary manager Sir Alex Ferguson was among those to voice his, his opposition to the decision. Talk of the Super League is a move away from a 70-year-old European club football, he, re he reiterates. Both as a player for the provincial team Dunfermline in the 60s and as a manager of Aberdeen winning the Euro European Cup Winners' Cup, for a small provincial club in Scotland, it was like climbing Mount Everest. We all know what Alex Ferguson did. He was an unbelievable manager. Um, so Ed Woodward is gone. Pack your bags. Get ready, Glazers. You're next. This was honestly the most ridiculous, ridiculous couple of days. Um, Abbas said Glazers will be tough to go. They are venture capitalists and being owners of United makes them money. Yeah, but the fact that that Ed Woodward has stepped down is a huge, huge positive. Yes, maybe it might be hard to get the Glazers out, but look what we have accomplished in a few days. Look what we have accomplished. We were told that this is happening. And well, I say we were told. Our own club didn't even have the, the decency. They were cowards. They couldn't even come at us and tell us what is actually going on. On social media, they just continued to post shit because of all the fans were going absolutely bonkers and rightly so. We we do not want this. We we never asked for this. We didn't want a, a Super League. I don't want to play Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, Inter Milan every every few weeks. Nobody wants that. We the, the whole challenge of the league and the, the Champions League and, and earning your right to be there and winning games and knowing you're in the top four and you deserve to be there. To then been told that this is the league and, you know, yeah, you'll get to play here and the 15 founding members won't be relegated and or, or that they'll always be there. What? There's no fucking fun in that. What? Why did they even think that this was something that we would go for? Like, how in their, in their right minds did they think that this was okay? This was absolute bullshit. Nobody wants that. Like... The competitiveness of football is the reason we love football. I was having a conversation with one of my bosses today and we were talking about the, the whole relegation thing and the excitement of prom getting promoted or, or the possibility of getting relegated. Nobody wants to get relegated, but it's kind of like it makes it exciting. Think of Arsenal's season. This the Arsenal start to the season. Um, they're still doing shit in the league. I think they're ninth or 10th, but... They started so badly that we were all joking, saying, oh, Arsenal are going to be relegated. Uh -huh. And their fans probably did think, oh, my God, what if we are? What if we will be relegated? And that's the fun bit. You know, fans can take the piss out of other fans and banter other clubs. And, and it's a whole collective. You throw us into these stupid leagues and, and they're throwing MVP at you instead of man of the match. And they have the games on and there's ads left right center coming at you just totally americanizing the game and, and creating soccer for us fans who never signed up for this if we wanted to watch the mls we would 
you know, and that's no hate to MLS, but that kind of system, fine. If it works over there, that's fine. Someone commented on my video the other day, I think it was yesterday. Someone commented saying, yeah, but it works in America. So, and I was like, this is not America. America couldn't even lace the football league's boots in England. They could not match or ever match what the English football league has done. Like it may work in America, but it doesn't happen over here. And the competitiveness of football in England is huge, huge. And we want to play these games. We want to play these teams. We want to be matched up with teams that are in the FA Cup. And, and you know, this is a massive game for them. They are like playing, they're coming to play Manchester United. They're coming to play in Old Trafford. Yeah, it's been shit the past year because no fans have been there. But just think about how big it is for clubs when they get drawn against a massive team and the, the money that they get to take us out. It, it's absolute shit. But Woodward is gone. Ed Woodward, I can't believe it. I'm going to be scrolling through Twitter right now and you can you can chat along to me. Um, Ian Mark says, I couldn't believe the reports. Um, felt as if it was a dream. Fabrizio Romano tweeted, Woodward is gone. Fam, I am literally shook. I'm happy, but the Glazers are next. Get them out. That is it, guys, and we cannot stop. Look what we have achieved. Look what we have achieved. I've... I have literally, I'm not going to lie, I hope my boss isn't watching this, I have not done any work the past two days. All I've done is scroll through Twitter, read articles, listen to YouTube videos, cry and, and protest against this and literally use the hashtag no to European Super League about a million times. That is all I've done over the past few days since Sunday. <laughs> my best friend is in the comments saying Kieran wants to cry. I cried. I cried about 20 minutes ago. I went upstairs to Yahi and I was like, she was like, why are you crying? I was like, because football. And she was like, oh, you're so stupid. I was like, what? You don't get it. You don't get it. But yeah, I, I'm crying. Um, excuse my French, but F the ESL. Yes, guys, that is it. Fuck the European Super League. Screw it. Screw it. Fair play to Chelsea. Chelsea's fans right there. Um, I have a friend, Craigo. You might know him from YouTube. He was out there protesting with all the other Chelsea fans and the scenes were absolutely incredible. It was beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, this is what we can accomplish if we protest and put our minds to it. So I feel that it's only a matter of time before we get the Glazers out of our club. They cannot come back from this. They literally tried to ruin us. They tried to throw us into something that completely goes against our, our identity and it goes against the fans. And that's the most important thing. You know, you're nothing without the fans. And to do that without even consulting anyone really in the club, it was literally just blasted onto people. Like they were having meetings for the Champions League and to try and, and, and figure out what will be the next step in the Champions League. And then some of those those members on the, on the Champions League board were like, what? That we just had a conversation and everything was fine. And now they're doing this. Like, it, they're spineless, absolute rats, absolute rats. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Abbas Khan says, you're right, but how do you think we should get the Glazers out there? We just need to keep going, keep, keep ranting and raving online. Never stop. Constantly use the hashtag Glazers out. You know, if you're, if you're lucky enough to be in Manchester, you can, you can, go on protests outside the stadium, outside Old Trafford. Um, I'm not lucky enough. I'm, I'm here. I'm I'm in Ireland and I can't wait to go over for a game. I wasn't saying that about an hour ago, but um, I can't wait to be able to go over again. And I will never stop saying Glazers out, never, until they're in the club. And, and it, honestly, it can't happen. It can't. Now that this has happened, now that Ed, Wood, Ed Woodward has stepped down, this this, this is only the beginning. This is literally just the beginning. Like, are we still going to be punished? Are Manchester United going to be punished now because of what this guy has done to us? And he's now resigned and he won't face, well, maybe he will. But the repercussions, they're not really going to come back on him now because the asshole's resigned. Um, Husband says, hello, mate. Chelsea, Bayern, PSG, Man City, Dortmund, I believe so far have resigned. Well, 
Bayern, PSG and Dortmund were never in this to begin with. Um, but it is Chelsea, Man City, um, uh, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid have resigned from this league. So basically the European Super League, um, RIP, RIP. It was started on Sunday, it died on Tuesday. Um, like I, I'm delighted. I'm delighted about it. So if Man United have resigned, which I've heard from uh, Aaliyah Smith from Stretty News, she has announced that it is in motion that United will be leaving and it will be announced um, maybe tomorrow or so. Um, yeah, so Fabrizio Romano has come out and he said Ed Woodward will leave Manchester United as he was planning by months. Confirmed he was going to stay the role until the end of 2021. Um, yeah, and lots of people are, are applauding the likes of Harry Maguire Luke Shaw, because Luke Shaw came out, I'll, I'll read his, his post as well, um, but Harry Maguire apparently had a, a, a discussion with Ed Woodward um, and it it looks like he's he's done the right thing and, and made Ed Woodward listen and maybe even scared the shit out of him to, to leave. So here, here we go with Luke Shaw's statement um, and he says, not a minute has passed when I haven't thought about the current situation which is pretty much like all of us fans. I wondered how I could express my opinion without causing any issue for my club, which everyone knows I care deeply about. I grew up watching the Premier League and Champions League and fell in love with the sport watching. What, in my opinion, are the two biggest club competitions in the world, the Premier League and the Champions League. My ambition was to one day be able to play in these competitions and part of this determination was to show that with hard work, anyone can achieve these dreams and play on the highest stages. There is so much passion around the world for football and I have been privileged to experience that firsthand. However, I worry that these changes could impact the sport and I and millions of others love. We've been without supporters in the stadium for over a year now, and I know how much myself and my team have missed them in each and every game. I love that. Fans and players should always have a voice and their opinion should always be counted. Fair play to Luke Shaw. I, I think he was the first player to actually come out with words. Marcus Rashford did post a picture um, of the banner saying football is nothing without the fans, um, quoted by Sir Matt Busby. Um, David says, but isn't cash king in business? I don't get what you mean. Um, Orby Comp says, get out of my club, you dirty rat. Um, I, I guess you're talking about Ed Woodward, the little snake, absolute snake. Um, the Football Crew show says, let's not give up on the fight. Next time, get the Glazers out. Yes, exactly, Daryl. That's what we need to do. We don't stop. We do not stop. Every post Manchester United put out there, every post we comment, Glazers out. Every time we go by Old Trafford, if, if we're in the area, Glazers out. Anything we can do, stop buying the jerseys. Stop buying Manchester United merchandise until they are gone from our club. I have a video, it's on my homepage, um, or you could just search it um, through my football shirt videos. But I have not bought a Manchester United jersey since 2015. I bought one for myself and one for Yahi, and we went to Old Trafford um, to watch a game against Spurs. And that was the last jersey that I have bought from Manchester United. I've gotten gifts. Um, like Yahi, for example, bought me a jersey for Christmas. I didn't ask for it. And I told her, don't buy me jerseys anymore. And I told her that ages ago, don't. Sometimes she listens, most of the time. Um, but I have asked my family, do not buy me jerseys. Don't waste your money putting it into that club. Don't do it. I buy classic shirts. And in that video that I was talking about, I buy old classic jerseys. Maybe they're worn, maybe they're secondhand. I buy them. And that money goes to someone, someone who maybe, I don't know, do they have a job or they just like selling shirts? I don't know. But my money goes to that person to do whatever the fuck they want to do. My money does not go to these people. And that's what you have to do. Don't buy the merchandise. Don't do it. Don't. Uh, do you know how much I love the zebra shirt, the Manchester United zebra shirt? I love it. Do you think I'll buy it? No, I won't. 
I even love the tracksuit, which is really weird. And yeah, you're going to look like a, a full on human zebra walking down the road. But I will not buy it because I'm not putting money into that club. Uh, it's mad. But that's what we need to do. There are so many things that we can do. And you might think, what does unfollowing Manchester United really do? It's only one person. But if everyone gets together in some way and makes changes, still support your club, still support your players, support your players, but make little, little changes in your daily life as a football fan, whether you're a Manchester United fan, whether you're an Arsenal, Liverpool, anything, make little changes in your life that will affect these big guys' pockets because that's all they care about. They don't care about you. They do not care about you. They do not care about any fans. All they care about is the fans paying money. You may have heard Florentino Perez coming out and saying that 16 to 24-year-olds um, think that football is too long and they should maybe shorten the game. Um, and that's why they want to change it up. They want to have the Super League because they want to make it more interesting. Absolute bullshit. I have never in my life come across a kid that says, this match is too long. And I say kid, 16-year-old to 24-year-old. Nobody says that. What is he on about? Just because he is so old and he cannot stay awake any longer. That's not our problem that you fall asleep on the couch. That is not our problem. Why are you trying to ruin our game? And um, Ravi says, Noel, these fans abroad will still buy the kits and merch. Yeah, that's fine. You're never going to have a full United fan base. You're never going to have one, regardless of the, the topic. There's always going to be people that go against it. And that's fine. If those fans want to do that, they don't understand the history and what is going on in the world. They don't understand. And I wish they did. I wish they would listen. I I, I know that those fans see the, the hate and the anger and, and people, the upset fans. I know they see that. And they should think, oh, God, why are these people like that? We should be happy for our club. But if there's a problem, they should try and learn about it and understand instead of saying, oh, well, yay, I'm going to get to see Manchester United play Barcelona in New York. No, we don't want that. And they shouldn't want it either. It's fine the way it is. Like, I, I don't live in Manchester. I don't get to see Man United. And, you know, maybe the idea of them playing in a Super League, you never know. They might be playing games in Dublin. I do not even give a shit. I don't care. I don't want that because I fell in love with Manchester United this way in the Premier League, fighting for the Champions League. That is how I fell in love with Manchester United. And those fans, whether they're in China, whether they're in India, they fell in love with Manchester United the very same way. So why the need to change it? It doesn't matter. They'll always be the way they are. It doesn't matter. This is, a, this is just a way for these play, these owners of the clubs to make so much money. That's all they want. That is all they want. And Ed Woodward is gone. And he's literally, he has been a parasite at our club. He's been awful. And I know awful things have happened to him. Like, you know, fans attacking his house and stuff. And he's had to move and, you know, all that stuff. But if you look at what he has done to the club over, over time... It's fucking criminal. It's absolutely criminal. Gaz says, Woodward, I'm laughing my ass off. Kieran says, Fabrizio says, Woodward is staying till the end of 2021, seven minutes ago. He isn't leaving straight away. Well, we <laughs> we need him gone. And him leaving at 2021, fine. I'm happy about it. And um, whether he stays a while, I don't think he I don't think that's gonna work out very well for him. So he needs to leave ASAP. Um, but yeah, I did I did read Fabrizio Romano's tweet, but I obviously didn't get that 2021 thing. Um, I'm just gonna check my my thumbnail on this video. What is it? I thought I, I made a thumbnail for the video, but it looks like it's not. As long as he goes, that is the main thing. Yeah, Kieran, once we get him gone and the Glazers to follow. Because honestly, I was I was ready to pack my Manchester United bag and throw it in the river and, and just stop supporting. I was. And that's all. I was, I was honestly, I was crying a while ago. And um, Black Diamond Devils as Glazers and Matt Judge out now. Yep. Get them out. Get them all out. Like, I'm just so glad that the players like Marks Rashford and... Um, 
Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire stepped out. Gaz wants to give us a hug. Yeah, <laughs> bring it on in. Bring it on in. Um, but yeah, guys, this is this is insane. Like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Parasites, like trying to ruin our clubs. They ruined the result on they ruined the result on, on Sunday for me. I just felt we won the game, but I completely forgot about the game. There was no I didn't I didn't care because this news literally ruined my night. The whole of Monday. I spent in work refreshing my my Twitter timeline, pretty much crying, um, like absolutely fuming, and just tweeting, tweeting absolute. I was like a, I was like, I was like a woman who had just been broken up with, and I was so angry, and I was just doing like hate tweets and um, kind of like indirect tweets to my ex. That's pretty much how I felt all Monday and all today. I think I was probably even more mad today. But yeah, this like this is insane. I'm gonna I'm checking more of the news here. Um, Chelsea are playing Brighton right now, and of course that game was put back because the team bus could not get in. Um, let's see. Yeah, a lot of people just saying Woodward's gone. Woodward's gone. Um, absolutely brilliant. Like, honestly. I did not think that this news, after hearing that devastating news on Sunday, I felt like this this is the world, this is the world coming to an end as I know it, because that's all I do, watch football, enjoy football. And then to hear this, it's like, what? How? How does it just change from like, whoop, whoop, right here? Um, Elvis, are you the real Elvis? Elvis says, peace from Belfast. Boom. Gaz says Glazers are next. They better be. They better be. Ravi says, Noel, this league team is just a tourist attraction for non-footy fans. Yeah, I said this on Twitter. So my take on this, right, was the European the European Super League or Money League, for me, that was like a preseason. You know when United go and play in the likes of America um, and they're playing Real Madrid in the Rose Bowl that is like you know all the fans are there and they're like Ooh, and they're wearing like half and half jerseys and stuff like that and you're like you're watching along at home like nah that's not that's not what we do that's not how you do it and um, so that for me is like that's what it's going to be every week there's not going to be home and away games like in old trafford and then in uh the the new camp or Bernabeu. yeah the Bernabeu. that's not the way it's going to be it's going to be tour games. And do you think that they'd be able to focus on their actual leagues if they were even allowed into them? No. Well, it's never going to work. Never going to work. Um, ain't nothing but a hand dog. Um, says Gaz. Gaz loves a, a tune. Um, Elvis Mawini says, I'll never buy a United shirt or merchandise again until Glazers are out. I love that. And that's what we have to do. We have to do something somehow. Do not put your money into the club. Don't. Don't buy your season tickets. I know for so for so many season ticket holders, it's devastating because you may be a season ticket holder for years, maybe your whole life you've been going. But that'll hurt them the most. That'll hurt them the most. And I saw a post from a guy and he was like, I'm, I'm so afraid to give up my season ticket because... If I do, which I think I should, his head tells him he should, some silent fan who just never complains is going to buy that and they're going to go to the games and that'll be it. Um, So is it better in his hands where he will stand up against the Glazers but still go to games? You know. Jamie Curtis has just dropped a comment with great, great news. Jamie Curtis says, news just came in that all six Premier League teams have now left the Super League. Boom. I need to double check that. But I would not be surprised in the slightest, lads. I would not be surprised. Andrea Agnelli has resigned as the president of Juventus. Get in the bin. <laughs> Conor McGregor just tweeted, Hey guys, I'm, th- I'm thinking about buying Manchester United. What do you think? What would you do? What would you do if Conor McGregor bought Manchester United? 
the glazers have shot themselves in the foot. Yeah, I, the foot is is putting it nicely. I would have used another body part, but um, Rafi says Noel keep wrapping the scarf. Um, let's see any more news. Yeah, no, Edward was planning to quit in the summer, but he has now quit now. Uh, Super League, why? Just why, says Jackson Mercia. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Why? Do not fix something that's not broken. Um, and you know what, as well? My granny, she used to say, what's seldom is wonderful, right? Um, and it's so true. Just think about, you know, how often do we get to play top teams from different leagues? rare because we don't really do very well in the Champions League but it's still so much fun to look forward to and to get to that stage is like it's really rewarding when you get there when you you know when you're up against a, a Barcelona maybe not so much now because they're not doing too well but well I say that but they're doing well in the league but you know what I mean in in Europe they haven't been the Barcelona that they once were but when you come up against them it's because you deserve to be there you deserve to have this big game and then to just be thrown like Arsenal and, and Spurs to be thrown into this super league when they're absolute shit like Arsenal have have no right to be there Spurs even more so it's like it's just a whole money racket and and they thought that people would just be blindsided by this they thought people would be like oh yay super league oh my god like no if they had to put actual champions in there, then you might think, oh, okay, not that I would have, but others might have thought, okay, well, fair enough, these are some kind of champions. All they thought about was probably the the um, Son, Sonny, the Korean. He is so popular amongst Koreans, and there's so many fans, there's so many people in the world that just literally support teams because of players. So if he was to maybe move on to somewhere else, let's just say, Manchester United, for example, if Son went to Manchester United, we would accumulate a feck load more of Korean fans. That's just football sometimes. So that's probably why Spurs are then being invited in. They've done it all right in the past few years. Yeah, they got to a, a, a Champions League final and they're doing okay in the league. Under Pochettino was their best time. Um, and then obviously Jose Mourinho got sacked. So yeah, not so good. But that doesn't warrant being being in there. And Manchester United, they, they barely have a leg to stand on. We can barely get into the top four at times. We're doing better now, but when we get in there, we fuck up. Uh, Istanbul, Bashak here, beat us. Do you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> Terry just gives us some information about stocks. So he says... Man United's down to $1.20 in New York. So there you go. When Manchester United got into this super shite league, their their stock and um, price plummeted up. Boom, gone, up, up, up. And now back down, as Terry has just explained. Um, my dad says, told you, I said it once. One team pulls out, the whole thing will. Boom, and he dabs. He's very fond of the dabbing emoji. And um, Thomas Riley says, imagine if the Glazers follow and loads of love hearts. If the Glazers follow, I will I will cry. I'll just do a live stream of me crying because I'll be wiping my tears with 50 euro notes that I'll definitely be ironing and folding and putting back into my purse later because I don't have money to do that. But that's what I will do. And um, Ads M um, says, Slabhead is worth a email after that blinder he and Shaw played. Yeah, so we have to get behind the players. To those who, who have abused our own players need to just shut up. Harry Maguire is a massive, massive head to have in our dressing room. And him going against Ed Woodward and all that jazz, respect him. Respect him. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just replying to something. Um... Gaz says Ollie should have spoke out. Gaz, I disagree. Ollie was thrown under the bus. Ollie was literally after the game, this is out, and, and he has to, he has no idea what to say. 
like he, he doesn't even know what's gone on. All the managers have. Some managers have had press conferences and then they've been like, oh, okay, at least they've had time to think about it. Oli was literally thrown under the bus and he shouldn't have to come out and hold a press conference about this. It's not Oli's club. Yeah, he's the manager. He's a, he's an employee of the club. But I'm sorry, what Oli doesn't have social media. He doesn't like he's not going to hold a, a live a live conference for for everyone. No, no one did. So to say Oli should have spoke out, I think that's ridiculous. Oli will be be asked about it. And um, we play on what day do we play? We play Leeds soon. So he's going to be doing a press conference very very soon over the next coming days. And yes, I'm sure he will address it then. But for the time being, Ali has has he doesn't need to come out and, and say anything. Jackson says, Do you think that United will win the league? I mean, can they be revenge for the City comeback in 2012? Oh, I think we're too far behind City, pal. I really do. I would love to do that. And um, but I feel that City are are just too far ahead. Um, I would love them to win, to lose a few games and United to creep up and make it at least a bit more exciting. But um, yeah, I I wouldn't get my hopes up. But there's still a small chance that that could happen. Um, Kiki Merrigan says, it was a, a European power grab. These clubs wanted to elect themselves as the aristocrats of Europe football. Become their own paymasters and screw everyone else. Perfectly said, absolutely spot on Kiki. Like, they just had no care for anybody else. They didn't care about the fans. They didn't care about the players. They didn't care about anyone but themselves. And that is the problem. Um, and that is why Ed Woodward has had to say, I'm gone, lads. I'm gone. Sorry, I'm going to have a little swig of my horrible beer. But it's a celebratory night. So um, <clears throat> let's see, guys. Let's see. Let's see what Twitter is saying. I actually can't believe this. I really can't. I'm gonna put on the Chelsea game here in the background and see what's gone on. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I honestly, I, I feel like, I feel like crying. I really do. It's just been a whirlwind of days. It's been, <laughs> yeah. I knew you were gonna point that out, Kieran. It is Carling. There was a deal on. They didn't have any good cans in the shop, so I got the Carling. I was trying to relive my um, electric picnic days when you're just kind of drinking whatever's on offer. So, yeah, it is a kind of car. And um, Kiki says it's been an emotional 48 hours. Oh, yeah. Like, and do you know the worst thing about this, right? The worst thing is people who don't like football do not understand. And they think that we're big whinges and we're just babies and we're crying because I'll oh, get over it. It's just a game whoa never say it's just a game to a football fan like no I tried to tell my mom about it I was like oh yeah I feel really sad I have headaches I've had a headache all day and she's like um oh, okay why I'm like uh it's united you know told tried to tell her what's going on and she's like as if grow the fuck up get over it nope can't can't and obviously I did cry a few minutes ago and yeah he was like you're a baby you're a baby and um, Ravi B says the club don't care about the OG fan they are irrelevant yeah that's it the club just care about um quite evidently from what Florentino Perez said about 16 to 24 year olds they just like gaming and stuff like that they think that those are the the age group that will be buying all the stuff and all like it's so wrong it's so wrong to like they get their numbers from some stupid online surveys but the people that are online are that age group a lot of the time there's so many fans out there like I have a neighbor across the road and I see him out in the garden nearly every day and he's wearing a different United jersey and he's an older man like he bloody loves the club and you know he's buying all the jerseys he's I think he's got the home away and third strip from the season like there's so many fans around the world all ages and you need to respect them all you don't just say oh we're changing this so we become more appealing to the younger generation 
Like think of your think of the generation who got you to where you are. They're the ones that deserve the respect. I just can't believe I cannot believe that this couple of days has literally gone like it's literally been just upended and it's amazing. I feel happy, thank God. But wow. My my main concern now is the punishment of these teams, these six teams from the Premier League, what is going to happen? Because I really don't think that this is just going to be brushed under the carpet. And, and, you know, I hope what is coming out is that the fact that these, the board members and, and the owners did this um, all kind of secretly and, you know, the clubs shouldn't be punished and stuff like that. But to be honest, I feel like because of the owners, that the Glazers are still going to be our owners. I do think that this should hurt them in some way. I think there should be a punishment that hurts the Glazers. And as a fan, it's hard for me to say that because I don't want something to fuck up my team. I don't want something to maybe ruin our chances with winning something. But at the end of the day, we need to punish our owners because they nearly, they tried to ruin us. Our owners tried to fuck us over and throw us into some sort of money grab league that we don't even get to enjoy and we refuse to enjoy because it's not for us. It's not for us. So they need to be punished. And I hate saying it because it's going to hurt the fans in some way. Kiki says TV revenue is king. If people didn't already know, the curtain has been pulled back. We deserve to have the book Toronto's. Yep, we do. We do. And I'll be fully behind it. Max Nato is here and he's saying, yeah, it's time to go. <laughs> Fucking Glazers. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, never forget what these owners did. They all need to be fined and hopefully that will make them leave. Yep. Yeah, I hope we run them out like St. Patrick ran the snakes out of Ireland because that's, that's all they are. Snakes. Absolute snakes. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm just reading through Twitter. Um, <laughs> one guy says, at what point did everyone involved think that the European Super League was a good idea? Mm-hmm. I think that's what we're all asking. Um <laughs> Twitter is hopping tonight. Gary Neville. I must give a shout out to Gary Neville because he has been brilliant this past few days with all his words, his speeches coming out. I think Gary Neville has been brilliant. And the only thing I'm sad about is he did not do it sooner. Um, but again, we won't dwell on that. All we want to look at is what we can do, the power of the people, the power of the fans. Look what we can achieve when we unite together. Like, <laughs> this is going to sound funny, right? I don't like seeing Liverpool fans and, and rival fans on my timeline. I don't like it. And I found myself connecting with fans all around the world, rival fans who were like, I probably would have fought with last week, had a little Twitter brawl. But I found myself connecting with these fans because we were all together, united as one against this ESL shite league. And I was like, I'm, I'm literally here retweeting pictures of Liverpool fans holding banners saying, yes, lads, like, what is wrong with me? But that's how that's how much it affected us. Like, if it was just an attack against Man United, you know, all the Man United fans coming together, it might not have been the same outcome. But this is an attack on football fans all around Europe and the world. And we literally all came together and everyone did something Everyone played a part in this. Everyone. And they knew, oh shit, the repercussions are too much. There's no going back from this. This league ain't happening. And we need to flee because this is, they've literally signed their, their, what's the word? They've basically hammered the final nail in their own coffins. That's it. Um, Adrian says, hi, Noel. Lau says, too much reclaimed, dude. Um, Elvis says Belfast protesters to be going to Manchester to sort them Glazer fellas. I will be all for it. Max says we should have also spoke sooner, sooner as the Glazers 
FSG, Perez, etc. took over, but we need to stand together as a community, Rivals aside, rivalries aside, and get all of these parasites out of our game. For 100%, 100%, that's what we have to do. Um, you know, and I had a little, not an argument on Twitter today, but I had a little debate with someone on Twitter um, about, you know, they were saying, oh yeah, but the fans, they'll say this and then nothing will happen. And I was like, don't underestimate the fans. We, you know, if they're if they want to make a change now, that's great. You know, don't give out to them because they maybe didn't step up and, and fight against the Glazers as much as you did before. But the fact is they're doing it now. And there's no time like the present. And um, it's never too late to make change. It's never too late to fight and stand up for what you want. And you know, don't 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 give out to fans for not doing something sooner. We just need to stand for the now and get it done and stick together. Whether you're a Liverpool fan, whether you're an Arsenal fan, whether you're a Man City fan, whether you're a Manchester United fan, we all need to stick together and, and look what can happen. I've been at games and, you know, you've had banter and your arms around other people and they may be rivals. You're having a bit of fun. Football is is more than just a game. Um and I think we all, we've all learned that. We know it, but I think we've learned it especially over these past few days because it really hurt us. It really got to us. Like, I barely thought of anything else. I barely thought of anything else. Like, I was getting phone calls in work. And I in work, I would speak to a lot of people from the UK. And, you know, a lot of phone calls with people in Manchester and stuff. And I found myself... I literally had to hold my mouth because I was like, I was about to say like, yeah, can I just ask, how do you feel about the Super League? Like, that's literally what I was, what, what I was like. And there was one guy and he rings all the time and I've recognized his voice so much that I know his name just by him saying hello. So I was, I know he's from Manchester because I can recognize the accent, but I was, I was, I was this close to asking him to for his thoughts on this league and that's how it was affecting me I couldn't even do my job properly like that's all I was thinking about um I can't read your name but you say get in get in get in on repeat mode Noel love it fist bump we did it we did it um Lau says but 250 million for participation is good Lau if if 250 million for participation is something that excites you then, I don't know, maybe watch the NFL or something, but this is not how football is or should be. And and we don't want participation medals. We want medals for being champions. And if we don't win medals, we're not worthy of that. And we try again. We try again and we try again and we try again. We don't want to be in some, some charity league that we get loads of money and basically nothing really happens, but we just play because because there's lots of money being thrown at us and fans in in every every area of the globe are getting to see it. No, that's not football. That is not football. Shaberto Carlos and Harry Mag- Magadini. <laughs> yeah, Hazza. Hazza has literally headbutted Ed Woodward out of Manchester um, and fair play. Maxi Maxi says the game that separates us is also what binds us. Rivalries are only second to the sport and the owners tried to steal the sport. This is not victory when only the owners are gone. It is victory. Yes, and that is it. We need to keep fighting. Get the glazes out. Get the glazes out. Um, Lau said sponsors should come to UCL to increase the stakes if they still want to throw money somewhere. To be honest, a lot of fans aren't really concerned where the money is going because for the love of the game, we know that we know football is being ruined by money right now. We know that. And there's nothing really we can do about it. And um, I'm not going thinking about, oh well, sponsorship in this and we need this and they need this. To be honest, that that doesn't doesn't I don't listen to that shit. All I want is my club to be playing in the league that I love and competing at the top level that we all aspire to be in. And if we don't make it there and we're in the Europa, that's the second best. Captain Coco says, Noel, I love you. I love you too. 
Finally, I can tell my grandchildren once upon a time there was a Super League that lasted two days and Arsenal and Spurs remained unbeaten with zero trophies. <laughs> Let's face it, they were never getting trophy. Um, <clears throat> Black Diamond Devil says ESL and Unholy Union death. Sean O'Leary says Woodward is being a fall. Um, do you know, even Irish politicians were coming out and, and to fight against the Premier League. And I know, like, I'm Irish myself, but the Irish League is falling to shit. And these politicians think that they can speak up against the Premier League. Go and sort your own leagues out first. Um, because I, you know, I go to League of Ireland games when I can, and it's absolutely shite because the, the stadiums are completely derelict, a lot of them. Um, and, you know, football in Ireland needs help, needs help. Um, as you know, I, I moved house and there is a stadium about 20 minutes from me. And as soon as fans can go back to games, I'm buying a season ticket and I'm going to go to the games. Um, you know, they, I, I, they're not my favourite team, team in Ireland, but I'm going because I live local and I'm going to support local. And um, so there we go. Marty Whelan for technical director. There you go, Sean <laughs> O'Leary. Um, Ravi says, Noel, it's about money. It's a shame, though. Money talks. Money does talk. It is a shame. But money ruins the game. And and we know we know what's going on. We know the players' wage demands is, is sky high and all this stuff. But we don't want to be going to these stupid leagues and competing for the same thing over and over again. It, it's ridiculous. Um, football Crew Show says, I'm surprised that Darren Fletcher hasn't made a statement as a football director. I'm sure that will that will happen eventually. I just feel that it's been very tough for us all. The past few days have been really tough. And, you know, the uncertainty of, of not knowing what is going to happen, where we're going to be. And um, for me, the, the main my main concern was, can I stand by my team with this? Because I really have no desire to support them in this league. And that was my main concern. And I was terrified that I'm going to have to give up one of the things that I love the most. And thankfully, that isn't going to happen. Oswald says, since Chelsea pulling out, it will be a domino effect. The rest of the English teams um, will avoid the Super League. Yeah, apparently they are and it's, it's happening. So, yeah, um, fingers crossed that that continues. Um, but that's it. You know, all you need is, is a team to have some cojones and stand up and fight for what they believe in. And that will be it. Um, you know, <laughs> LOL, man like Conor McGregor wants to buy. At this moment in time, I would have anyone buy the club. If Conor McGregor bought United, I would not cry about it obviously he he knows nothing about football but currently Joel Glazer doesn't even know the offside rule so he can he's definitely going to be better than these stupid Glazers um Max says unfollow them on social media delete the app boycott the games easy because of lockdown uh, that's all we can do right now yes stop buying merchandise unfollow socials um stop stop putting any any type of money into Manchester United and we will hurt them. And um, Football Crew Show says bring back David Gill. Yeah, he's been appointed with a new role in the UEFA. I think from from what I saw today. Um but yeah, he he was he was good. He was good. Leah says football was fans first um love and then they tried to take that away. Yeah, like look at it. Most of us have grown up our whole lives playing and loving sport. And, you know, it you, you don't just change your team. You can't just say, I love this team. And then a few years later, you change and you change. That doesn't happen. Well, not for many people who actually love clubs, a club. You don't do that. And, and the fact that they thought that we could do this and, and just be happy about this change being forced upon us. It hurts the real football fans. You cannot do that to us. Uh, Ian Mark says, I'm hearing protests will still happen at Old Trafford this Sunday, which I'm all for. Get the Glazers out 
So spread the information to other United fans. There we go. A protest at Old Trafford this Sunday. Are we playing on Sunday? Is that... Are we playing Sunday? I know we play Leeds, I think, but... Yeah, so like other teams, obviously Chelsea fans were at the Chelsea Stadium today, Stamford Bridge, um, protesting, and they wouldn't let the bus pass. So, you know, if that is happening, good. And, you know, we need to do everything we can. So if you are able to go, do it. Do it and go for me. Go for me. Um, what I'm going to be doing... You know I wear my Nike, my United jerseys and all old ones from back in the day. So I won't be wearing any any newer jerseys. Um, and I'll be putting putting on my old ones, classic ones. And all the others will go in a box. Um, I'll be unfollowing Manchester United. I've already done that on Twitter. You might see the video of me doing that on Twitter. Um, but yeah, this is not the end. This is not the end. And... We have proven something to ourselves that if we work together and if we if we stand united, we can get past this. We can we can fight, and that's what we're doing. That is what we are doing. A wise man once said, "It's time to go." And um, I I can't believe that everything is blowing up right now. I'm gonna sleep so well tonight. Like, I've been sleeping a little bit badly. You know, not the worst, but it's kind of been, you know, when you just can't stop thinking and you find it hard to switch off. Um, I have felt so bad. So this is definitely going to help me sleep tonight, guys. Definitely. Now, let's just have a quick check on Twitter just to see if there's any new news. Um, my internet is quite slow. It's strange. Um, <clears throat> Noel, I can send you a teddy bear to sleep with tonight. I don't think it'll get here on time. I have a teddy bear already, though. Thank you. His name is Martin Mess, if you were wondering. Um, still nil all between Chelsea and, and uh, Brighton, by the way. Um, <laughs> Spartak Moscow have been on it these past few days. They They just tweeted... European Super League, RIP, 19th of April 2020 to the 20th of April 2020. You will not be missed. Fair play. Do you know what? So many clubs have ban- have been bantering us and we, we fully deserve it. Like, we, don't, we didn't ask for this, of course, but there's literally been every club bantering every top six. Like, we are, we're going to be forever known as the greedy six now. Um, and it's not our fault, but that's that's it now. Like, this, we won't hear the end of this now. The European Super League will always be that thing. Like, I remember they were, they were trying to name a stadium in Dublin, the Bertie Bowl, um, after Bertie O'Hearn. And, like, it's still, that like, this was going on when I was a child. And even still, jokes are made about it. Um, Oswald says, I'll support the Super League if there was a promotion and relegation. Top 20 European clubs playing each other based on point system. 40 games total. Oswald, uh, I I still wouldn't. I still wouldn't. It, it, a relegation system would be better, yeah. But I, I think the Champions League is, is just fine. Yeah, maybe make a few changes. But um, the Champions League is the Champions League. Like, the music, everything about it gets us going. It's, like, such excitement. Like, the Super League, with the people that wanted to run it, the people who were who were involved in it, there's no way anyone, anyone in their right mind could get on board with this. It was just a complete money grab. And no one in their right mind could should support that. You know, if it was being run by actual football people and people who want to make um, change for the greater good of the game, maybe I'll listen. But something ran by Joel Glazer, Stan Kroenke and all these other bandits, Florentino Perez. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can go now. Gonna leave Noel. I've been I have an assignment due in two hours. I've been watching the football news the entire day. So have a good evening. And everyone else watching. Max, thank you for joining. Good luck with your assignment. Get it done. And yeah, you're going to sleep better tonight. Because 
we have all been literally just refreshing our timelines today and hoping for, for better news. I, I actually posted on Twitter. No, I posted on Instagram and I said how down I felt and hopefully tomorrow will be a better day. And up until about an hour ago, I still felt shit. And it actually turned out to be a better day. So there you go. Um, still can't believe it. I was going to start supporting bloody Burnley. If you know, you know, thank God. Um, but yeah, guys, how good does this feel? How good does this feel? It's been quashed. And we, we've won. Like, adios, Ed Woodward. You little shit. We don't want you. We do not want you. This has basically been a watch along pretty much, but no match. I've just been talking. There's been no agenda, no list, just me chatting absolute shite. Um, but guys, I'm going to go. I'm going to go because I wasn't, like you can see, I've, I'm literally sitting here just after my dinner in the kitchen. So I was not ready to do any type of um, video or stream today. But I had to jump on when I heard the news about Ed the Snake Woodward. And um, remember this quote, guys. This world has enough to satisfy every man's needs, but not enough to satisfy every man's greed. There you go. What a way to end it. Guys, enjoy the rest of your night. Much love. Sleep well. And I will chat to you very, very soon.